Thank you to Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology for publishing this work and allowing me to provide the community with a video podcast. My name is Dan Whitney, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Michigan. The work I will highlight here was focused on developing a clinically friendly tool to monitor the health and disease status specific to adults with cerebral palsy. For a variety of reasons, adults with cerebral palsy are at risk for an early development of an array of morbidities, which can lead to a lower quality of life and premature mortality. Importantly, many morbidities can be prevented, delayed, or at least better managed with clinical intervention. While a lot of research is needed in this area, an early addressable barrier to improving clinical care for adults with cerebral palsy stems from the lack of knowledge of when to monitor and prescribe prevention or treatment strategies. Simply knowing that adults with cerebral palsy have an increased risk for premature morbidity may not be sufficient to assist in effective clinical decision making. An additional barrier is that, unlike children with cerebral palsy, many adults are treated by clinicians that do not have expertise in treating an aging person with cerebral palsy. The focus of this research was to develop a clinically friendly tool to monitor the health and disease status specific to adults with cerebral palsy, but that can also be used by clinicians that do not have experience or expertise in treating this population. By using an iterative process that harmonized clinical theory, existing validated measures, and data-driven approaches, the Whitney Comorbidity Index, or WCI, was developed. The WCI contains 27 clinically relevant comorbidities that are summed to create a single WCI score. A higher WCI score means a higher number of comorbidities, which corresponds to a poor health and disease status. The WCI was developed as unweighted and weighted versions to determine if a balance is needed between clinical feasibility and predictive accuracy. The unweighted version gives each of the 27 comorbidities a score of zero or one if they are absent or present with a total score ranging from zero to 27. The weighted version applies a data-driven algorithm to develop a weight for each comorbidity. The weighted approach is meant to give more emphasis to comorbidities that are more strongly associated with poor health. For example, metastatic cancer is more pressing for health and disease than let's say a milder comorbidity, and therefore gets a higher weighted score. The results from this study found that the WCI as both unweighted and weighted was a strong and robust predictor of mortality at one and two year time points. Further, the results suggest that the WCI better captured the unique morbidity profiles for adults with cerebral palsy and was a significantly better proxy for health and disease status compared to other commonly used clinical methods to help, uh, monitor health and disease status for the general population. Future directions for the WCI include validation steps. There's also a need to understand how to utilize the WCI in clinical practice to assist in clinical decision making, such as identifying the thresholds of WCI scores associated with an increased risk of mortality which could help prompt clinicians for additional screening or intervention implementation. Finally, efforts will be needed to determine if the WCI is helpful to clinicians in their practice and how best to incorporate WCI into clinical practice. Thank you for taking the time to view this video podcast. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or of course, collaboration discussions.